Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with us, please, to the book of Galatians chapter number 6. Uh, Galatians chapter 6. And um, I won't have you stand for the reading of God's Word. You may remain seated. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. We certainly welcome all of those who are online. I received a text message even since I've been up here from John, John Poff in South Dakota. He said, we're missing you in the service. He said, um, he said I hope you're well or not, you know, you're not sick. That's the thing right now, even if you get sick, um, it's not from a normal, people don't immediately assume it's a normal sickness. They think you have the China virus. And um, so um, people are always watching and trying to figure out if, if you have the China virus or not. And uh, so John Poth, he sends me this uh, text message all the way from South Dakota. <clears throat> but see, we had, um, he had, he had assumed because Brother Schaefer opened the service that, that I wasn't here. But um, he then texted back and said, oh, I see you. So hello, Brother Poth. Uh, we're glad to have you here today with us and everyone else out there uh, who are tuned in today. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we ask for thy blessing upon this service. Move upon us as we endeavor to preach what you've laid upon our heart. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We talk about the things that matter to us, our children, our job, our home, our hobbies, our hunting, our fishing, our country, our church. But what mattered most to the preacher Paul? In this, his letter to the church in Galatia, what mattered most? It was the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the songwriter said, I will cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So above this church and above our community and above our nation, I want to lift up not a name, not an organization, not a church manual, not a political party, not a political candidate, but I want to lift high the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I lift high that cross, I first of all see hope. So many people feel like there is no hope for family situations out of control, for so many wrong turns that you've made. How do you fix what's broken? For so many trapped by alcohol, drugs, and perversion, my church can't fix it for you. I work with two pastors, Schaefer and Malloy, who as far as I'm concerned are the very best, but they they can't fix it for you. And I can't fix it for you. But when I lift high the cross, where Jesus suffered, bled, and died, was buried, rose again, he did this all for you. When I lift high the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, he can fix it for you. He can make a way. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible said he's the truth. He said about himself, I am the truth, the life, the way. Truly, Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. When I look at the cross, I not only see hope, but I see forgiveness. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, 
but quickened by the Spirit. On that cross, Jesus suffered there. On that cross, he bled there. On that cross, he died there to do the impossible for you and for me. He suffered for our sins to bring us to God, to forgive us of the bad things we have done, to clear the slate and set us free. And he can forgive you today. When I lift high the cross, I see cleansing. Ephesians 5, 25, Christ loved the church, gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Born again believer, look to the cross for the cleansing of that old carnal nature on the inside. You don't have to keep sinning. You don't have to stay a baby. You can keep growing and living for Jesus. When I lift high the cross, I see healing. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All across this nation, our people who have been afflicted, uh, we have heard of those in the hospital. We have heard of those who are sick. It doesn't come real close until we know that we have people we love and care about in the hospital and they won't even let us go in and see them. They won't even let us go in and pray for them. Now the hospitals, because of the government overreach, have gotten to the place where you can be sick with anything and they'll barely let a preacher in. Um, pastors, Pastor Schaefer called Geisinger Medical Center in Danville to see if we could get in to see Shirley Zeckman. They said, under no circumstances can you come into this intensive care unit. He said, I'd like, and you know, Pastor Schaefer's a good man. He doesn't take no for an answer. He said, I want to speak to someone higher up. He called and left a message. He said, spiritual needs are just, are even more important than physical needs. And those needs are important in these times when you're sick. He got a call back. He got a call back from somebody at Geisinger Medical Center in Danville. She said, you can go and visit in the intensive care unit. We're going to allow you to go in and visit. He was able to go in and see Sister Shirley Zeckman. She, the first thing she said to him, how in the world did you get in here? She knew that no one was allowed to come. Uh, it's a very difficult thing. It's easy to, um, uh, we don't even know what's really going on in our world with even this virus. There's obviously been worse outbreaks of things in our country, even in recent years, that they've not had this kind of scare and, and uh, shut down. Obviously, most everyone who's had it in our own church are people that have pulled right through like any other virus. But on the other hand, it becomes real serious when it's people you love who are in the hospital in intensive care units. It becomes real serious when my dear friend Rylan Mitchell in the hospital right now, and there's no way uh, to go and visit and even pray with them in person. But I want to tell you, when we lift high the cross, we understand that it's not only uh, to uh, give us hope, not only for forgiveness, not only for cleansing, and it's not only uh, for, um, for all of that, but it is for healing, for healing. Uh, with his stripes, we are healed. So my dear friend, Brother Rollin Mitchell in the hospital today, and others who are in the hospital, I believe that we can claim the blood for their healing. Glory to his name. I thought of my dear friend, Brother Lank Sechrist, who we've heard from nearly every month for years here at the church as he tunes into our services. And he's told me over and over what an encouragement these services are. Um, I went and visited him 
last week when I was in the state of North Carolina. My heart went out to him as he said, we were taken into the emergency room together. They took my wife in a direction and then from there into a rehab. She's so low, I realize I may never see her again in this life. My heart broke for him, for his dear family. Here, these are saints. They have been pillars in the holiness churches of North Carolina. But for my dear friend, Brother Lank Seacrest, suffering at the loss of his dear wife, and for others who are grieving at this time of heartache, I'm so glad that there's healing for suffering. Amen. I love the words to that song. I have a source of strength when I am weak that takes me through when life is pressing me. Oh, I claim the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. I'm so glad that we have a source today. Amen. When I look at the cross, I also see purpose. Mark chapter 8, verse 34, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, the cross is a negative word. It is not the gold cross that we see. Uh, we're, when we talk about Christ's cross, it is a crucifixion cross, a bloody cross. So it's a negative word. But friends, when you take up your cross and when you die to yourself, when you follow the lowly Galilean, then is when you find the purpose of your life. This world says, why in the world would you be a Christian? It's so negative. Let me tell you, you'll never find your purpose in life until you look at the lifted cross of Jesus Christ. Romans, uh, the, the, uh, your purpose will never be found until you look at the cross. When I look at the cross, I see everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever wrote those words had the right idea, just think. Just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Of taking a hand and finding it God's. Of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Of waking up in glory and finding it home. I'm trying to lift up the cross this morning over a world torn apart by violence, unrest, so divided, so despairing, over a nation ripped apart by the factions of left wing and right wing, uh, over our homes, too many at the brink, over our loved ones trapped in addictions and without hope in this life. Norman Rockwell was America's favorite painting painter. You've seen his paintings, even if you don't care about his name. The Thanksgiving dinner table perfectly set with the family gathered. Grandpa standing at the head of the table. Grandmother with the turkey on a platter, reaching to set it to the middle of the table. I don't know what painting you've seen, but his paintings are, are just awesome. Um, picture perfect American life in each painting. Maybe a little boy and a girl. I saw one recently of a f mother and father at the close of the day beside the bedside of their two little boys. Uh, and um, dad has a newspaper in his hand and mother is tucking the children in. I don't know what your favorite picture of Norman Rockwell is, but the truth of Norman Rockwell was broken marriage, remarriage, with wife and himself under psychiatric care. Eric Erickson was the psychiatrist at the Austin Riggs Center where Rockwell would seek treatment. And Erickson looked across the desk at Norman Rockwell one day and said, you paint your happiness, but you do not live it. I preach to someone today who longs for happiness 
You long for restoration and help. Let me tell you on this Sunday morning only, Jesus can do that for you. A personal relationship with him. It won't make life perfect. It won't change the world around you. But Jesus will change you in your world. Jesus Christ on that cross, lifted high in agony and shame and pain, the crowd passed by and mocked him in his naked, bleeding condition. Mark chapter 15 says they wagged their heads and railed on him, meaning they berated him bitterly, they humiliated him, and they shouted out, Save thyself and come down from the cross. Come down. Don't you kid yourself, the nails were not holding him anyway. Don't you kid yourself, he had no problem coming down. There were not enough Roman guards to hold him on that cross. He who created the world with words could destroy it with one word. Come down from that cross. But if Jesus could reply, he would look down through time and he said, I will not come down. I will not come down. I, I need to rescue James Plank. I need to rescue Wes Knapp. I need, I need to rescue Frona Rothamel. I need to rescue Scott Norman. I will not come down. I need to rescue Josh Haynes. I will not come down. Come down, they said. He said, he didn't even, he, he wouldn't even have said, I can't come down because he could have come down. Oh, he could have come down, but he said, I won't come down. I've got to rescue this one and this one and this one. Oh, I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus today. So thankful for the cross of Calvary. So thankful for what he did for me. Aren't you thankful today? Glory to his precious name. Amen. I'd like to close the service with a singing, I claim the blood. The uh, parking attendants are in place. We're going to pray a simple prayer. If you need Jesus in your life, reach out to us. Reach out to Brother John Gilly, our online pastor. Speak to us after the service. Pray where you are. Amen. Father in heaven, we pray for that person right now that you're talking to. We pray for that person right now that you're speaking to. We pray for that family that's troubled. We pray, oh God, the blood of Jesus over the situations of life that are impossible for us. Lord, we lift high the cross, knowing that we are glorying in that cross today as our absolute hope for forgiveness and for cleansing. Oh God, gives us purpose in life and gives us everlasting life. Dismiss us from this place, but not from thy presence. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. Uh, please wait till they dismiss you. As we go, let's sing this song together. I have a source of strength when I am weak. That takes me through when life is pressing me. I have a source of power from above. I'm covered over by a shield of love. I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me. For all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. When I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. I do not know 
how others made it through who never go to Calvary as I do for there the healing cleansing stream still flows with peace that only is redeemed can know I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary those precious blood stains they were made there for me for all my sin my sickness and my pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stains for all my sin my sickness and my pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stains. Thank God we'll be back tonight, 630, uh, inside the church. It will be broadcast to the parking lot and of course online always at beavertownchurch.com. There will be Sunday school at 530 and uh, we would invite you for prayer around the altar for those adults who are able at six o'clock. We thank you so much for standing behind the ministry here. You're welcome to give as you leave the parking lot or anytime at beavertownchurch.com. We're also grateful, so grateful for the notes and cards we receive at our mailing address, Beavertown God's Missionary Church, P.O. Box 2, Beavertown, Pennsylvania, 17813. Very simple address, Box 2. Beavertown, Pennsylvania, 17813. Thank you so much for all that you have done. And God bless you for being at church here this morning.